Hello, Ian here from Dark Blades Workshop. Welcome back to another video. Uh, this one we're painting Professor Quirrell. Okay, so in this one we're doing um, Professor Quirrell from uh, the first film. And uh, we had a bit of fun using the same colours as, I don't know if you've seen the Professor Lupin one, same colours for the suit or the jacket, but then we had a bit of fun doing the robes on the back with the, um, the Shades of Doom set. And uh, I think it turned out quite well, so I'm quite happy with that. But it's nice to get a bit of colour with the purple in there as well. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get on with it. Okay, so I'll start off with the skin. So I've got Citadel's... Um, Cadian flesh stone, and I'll put a tiny bit of Bugman, Bugman's glue in it. Okay, here we go. We're going to start off with the flesh, and um, I'm using Citadel's Cadian flesh. But I'll put a little bit of Bugman's glue in there, and it's 50% paint, 50% water. And I've got to say, this is the worst sculpt I've seen in regards to well it's the worst one I've, I've ever had to spend so much time on uh, in regards to getting it looking half decent because there's uh, mold lines and holes but uh, I'm gonna go for it you can see that the uh, fingers are slightly deformed as I can't get in between the fingers to trim away all the uh, all the flash bits, but I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna make Doom carry on. So we're going to shade the skin with um, Reichland Flesh Shade. Try and get it into the eye sockets and the cheeks and the nose and the mouth. Um, we'll come back to the skin in a bit. I'm going to do the um, the jacket or the coat now. And I've gone with olive green with a little bit of khaki in it. Not quite 50-50 and I've added a bit of flow improver to it as well just to make it flow. <laughs> and uh, We'll see what colour we get. Um, if you haven't got this, I'll have a look. Uh, I'll have a look in through my Citadel paints and see if there's, a, there's an alternative with um, those. I'm sure there must be something close to this. Uh, just getting rid of the air bubbles. I'll get the inside as well. I'm going to try and follow the colour of the box art, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. And while that's drying, we'll do the, the turban um, in a blue-violet. We 
which I've got all over my hands at the minute because the bottle there squirted everywhere. So I can see this being two coats. Second coat of the coat for Mr. Quirrell. Next up is the trousers. I've got German grey and I'm just going to block in the colour. We'll do the shoes the same colour. Uh, robes are going to be a different, different set of greys just to make it look a bit better. Probably go for the Slytherin green robes. I know he's not Slytherin, but uh, same colours for the Slytherin robes. So it's like uh, scale 75 um, Shades of Doom set. So we've got the theme going through out the, the series so far for cloaks. So. I'm going to stick to that because I did promise that the, the this series of videos were going to be using the same paints just to you know limit your budget. Okay, so I'm going to shade the, the coat with. Uh, Athonian Camo Shade and um, depending on how I've never used this one before depending how it turns out I'll decide whether it needs a darker um, shade or not um, we shall see. I don't want it too thick, I just want to change the tone. So I'm getting rid of where it pulls. Uh, onto the robes for Mr. Quirrell. Um, we've got scale 75's Despair Green. 
be putting a couple of coats of this on. It's, uh, it's nothing special, just blocking the colour. Make sure you go all the way around. And knowing this colour like I do, there'll be a couple of coats. So we'll come back when that's done. Okay, you might spot that I've been working on the face a bit, but uh, we've done tutorials on that before, so I thought I'd skip over it. Um, I'm using the purple wash from Games Workshop now, just to give it a quick coat, a little bit of contrast before we start highlighting it. And I've added a little bit of water to it. Just to tone it down a wee bit. So all I want is for it to go into the creases of the term and that should do nicely. Okay, so going back to the jacket, I've got the original base coat, which is um, one drop of khaki, one drop of olive green, two drops of water. And I'm just going to re-establish the, uh, the layer that we put down with that, so it... Uh, it shows the... Um, where we put that shadow down. So we should have a nice little bit of contrast starting to build. Um, let's put that bit up there as well. The only thing is, because it was so badly cast, um, we're missing quite a bit of detail on the sleeve, so I'm just going to have to go with what, what we've got. So, our second pass. So for the next highlight, I'm just going to put a bit down here as well, because that might catch a bit of light there. This is down towards the bottom. Um, I'm going to add gold brown. I'm going to do it in stages. Um, so it's just a, a little bit. I'm going to add gold brown to the original mix. And uh, we'll start highlighting.
I'll put a little bit down the bottom again. Basically picking out the top of each crease. And I don't go all the way down to the, the underside of the arm, leave the underside in shadow. Um, so you're just highlighting the tops of the sleeves. Um, right, so more gold brown to the original base coat mix. So we're about 50-50 now of the base mix and the gold brown. And I've added a bit more water to it. And we're doing smaller highlights. So I'm pulling the paint towards the corner of that bit of material. I'll run my brush up this edge here and I'm going to do that bit there because I'll leave that bit in shadow so I'm just on the bottom and from about halfway all the way up Right, so more gold brown to the mix, so it's pretty much pure gold brown actually. Um, and same again, but smaller highlights again. So I'm going to pull it towards the point of that fold. Just run it along the top of that highlight there. And the corner here. And for running it up here, I'll start about there and pull it up. And right down the bottom there. So we've got a nice bit of contrast coming there now. We'll do another pass and um, just leave it to dry first. So 
So I'll start with that edge highlight. I'm not worried about getting it on his trousers because we'll paint them afterwards. Okay, so I've got some pallid witch flesh and I'm just going to add that to the gold brown mix. Um, if you use ivory, I'm, I'm just being lazy. You've seen the loop in um, tutorial, it's exactly the same. I'm doing them at the same time. What I'll show you is actually in a minute. Give you an idea of what we're going for. There's the same highlights with Lupin. Um, just to give you a rough idea. So what I did with Lupin then was to get a the wash again, which is luckily on the side of my palette here. So that's the olive green khaki with a little bit of Agrax in it, and it's thinned down. And I'm just going to push the shadows. It's very thin. I was pushing it up to where I think the, the light wouldn't, wouldn't hit at all. So it's right under that highlight. In towards the body. And it just pushes that highlight. You know, makes it not stand out a little bit more, which is what we're after. I oh, love a bit of contrast. And I'll do the same on the sleeves as well, just to save time. And I'll push it in that shadow there as well. Yeah, not bad. So I've got some Nagaroth Knight and I've thinned it down. Uh, I'm just going to throw it into the deepest folds. It's pretty much like a wash consistency. Let's add it to the underside of everything as well, and I'm gonna get it into try and get it into each crease of that turban. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush.
and then I'm ready to start highlighting it now. So I've got the original blue violet. Just putting in the uh, base colour again where I've gone over it too much with the shadow colour. to highlight it. I've added a bit of ice yellow to it and it's more or less a pink. So if you've got a lilac or something similar just use that and Apply it where you think the light will hit. So I think if we pull it up towards the top there, top of the turbine's always going to get a light. Let's try and keep it towards the front end and the top of each one or top of each fold. So I'm going to add some more ice yellow to the mix in a minute. can probably guess what I'm going to do because we've gone quite light here the plan is to get a violet ink to wash over And that'll bring back the intensity of the, the colour. 
works well with um, reds as well. If you if you highlight with uh, a light white off white color something like that, it goes towards pink. If you give it a red ink glaze, um, it brings it back to something more natural looking. I was trying to get the highlight right to the front of the turban. Then Nagaroth night again. Just to re establish that fold. Right, still needs a bit of work. So I'll put another highlight in. This time I've gone back to the the blue violet. I've added ivory to it to get um, a brighter highlight. So it's like a really light, light pink. Okay, so I've got a violet ink and uh, trying to get a piece of towel so you can see very thin. You can see it explodes away from the brush, so I get rid of most of it and then just apply it to the turban. I'm going to try and stay away from the highlighted areas if I can, but it's virtually impossible up the front. It's just a super thin glaze. A 
and it just brings back that purple violet intensity back again so um, it's just a cloak in the trousers now isn't it so yeah let's get on with them so we're about to start the the cloak on quirrell and I'm using the Shades of Doom set as usual for the, the robes so we got uh, Necro Grey, Despair Green, Rie Grey, Miskatonic Grey if we need it. <coughs> you probably heard me gushing about the Shades of Doom. <laughs> it's probably getting boring by now but uh, it really is a fantastic set. Okay. Let's get comfortable and we'll get started. So I've laid the colours out on my palette, which I have got there. So from dark to light going that away, and then a 50-50 of a couple of the tones just in case we need them. So I'll set that to the side. And we'll hit focus and away we go right so I'm gonna start off the highlights with uh, despair green on its own and if I look at it from that angle you'll see where the light is gonna hit these areas so that's where we're gonna highlight and it won't become apparent straight away because we've got a dark base coat but stick with it just hit the raised areas So while that is drying, we'll go around the front. And just pick out the, uh, the raised folds. I'm not too concerned about these in here, but we'll put a little bit of colour there. No, you're not really going to see it. Okay, we're nearly dry on the back, so we'll go with another pass. Okay, so I'm going to move on to, it's like a 50-50 mix of the Despair Green and Rie Grey. I'm just going to try it, see how much contrast we get. Um, I'll give it a blast with the hairdryer first, hang on. Okay, here we go with the 
50-50 mix. With this part here, I'm not going to pull the the mix down here because that's going to be in shadow, so I won't go all the way down. Just a wee bit. And after, usually after about two passes, you'll start to see it. And then we need to start thinking about working in smaller areas where we've already highlighted. I'll find an angle that you might be able to see it, but there's not. There's not. So we'll go on with a, another pass. I'm, I'll stick to the the back of the cloak. I think and it'll uh, speed things up for you. So there's no need to go down here now. Stay up in the raised areas. And I'm going to pull paint it up. I want the pigment towards the uh, the top there. And the same here. We can when we start highlighting now, we can pull the pigment up this way. And I think we can swap to. The Rie Grey on its own now. And again, the highlight came down to here. Hopefully, you can see that colour. But I'm going to start from here and go up the way. So it's a smaller area again. Same here, about halfway down. Second pass. Right, you have a blast with the head right out. I'm going with another pass now and starting further up the highlighted area. You may have noticed I've swapped to a down to a size two brush now with a nicer point on it. I 
rather than my old base coat brush. using the side of my brush there to catch all the edges because we will be lightening them up in a minute Hopefully you can see that there. So I'm going up to Rie Grey with a little bit of the Miskatonic Grey now and just highlighting the edges of um, each of these folds where we've already highlighted and catching everywhere where the light would hit And we'll do a couple more passes of this colour. Add more miskatonic grey to the palette and it'll just show you what tone we're working with now is that one there. So that's that's the Rie grey there. So that was the last highlight colour and now I've added more grey to it so that's where we are now. And you can see it's quite thin. So this is another highlight now to the edges.
building up the intensity of the highlight. I'm not particularly worried about making any mistakes because we will be going in with a like a black wash in a minute just to re-establish the shadows and that will make these highlights uh, stand out quite a bit more go with more of the miskatonic grey now so we're up to more miskatonic than Rie I reckon try to get in the centre of that highlight I think you can see the highlights there, can't you? So carry on to the happy. You can go lighter as well if you wanted to. to pure miskatonic grey, or if you got like a I don't know, uh, pale blue grey or something like that. Don't go white because it'll just chalk it out. Maybe an ivory to it. Because for a grey, it's it's not particularly light. Just make sure it's thin, and you do plenty of layers just to build it up. And if you're doing the highlight down here, I'd start the stroke there. And then do any subsequent strokes to a shorter distance or you pull in towards where you want the the highlight to be right at that point.
Alright, so I am going to, sorry, I, I should have paused this ages ago, but I'll carry on going. I'm going to put some, I'm going to try ivory. I'll just leave it running. Um, let's put some ivory on the palette. And you can see how much brighter that is than the grey. So there's the ivory, so I'm going to put a drop into there. Tiny bit of water. And then I'm going to start highlighting again. Just make sure you get the excess off your brush. You don't want to pull it. If you notice these three highlights are in line with each other, just to try and keep things consistent. And it'll draw the eye to that part of the cape then. How's that? Not bad, he says. Right, so I'm going in now with the, the Necro Grey. So this is the darkest colour. I'm adding plenty of water to it. And I'm just going to push the shadows just in case we've gone into it with any of the other colours. So just going into the each recess I'm pulling the pigment down the mate when we were highlighting up the way I'm pulling the pigment down the way So that's made the um, highlight stand out quite a bit more. In my hand I can see it. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the on the screen. Uh, trust me it's there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do bold highlights, I do nice and subtle. Okay, 
Right, so that's the back of the cape done. I'm going to carry on and do the, the front now in exactly the same style. Um, you may have noticed I've done the steps, so that's just a simple uh, loaded brush that I do with the bases. Um, it was a dark grey and then a pale blue grey. So you do the dark grey on your brush first and then you dip it into the blue grey and just feather it up the way. Really quick, really simple. Bit of black in between to separate the stones. Um, the only other thing I'll do is to put a black wash on the shoes. I think we're done. Yeah, let me carry on and we'll come back for the wrap up. There we are, Professor Quirrell is done. He's on his base, ready to go. Um, yeah, that's uh, good to get him finished. Uh, I, I struggled for a couple of days uh, with motivation. Um, but I managed to get the uh, the cloak done in one sitting last night, so it's fairly happy with that. So I hope you uh, hope you can glean something from the um, uh, the process of actually doing the the cloak. Um, I think it turned out quite well. You'll see you'll see some stills after this little blurb anyway, and uh, hopefully I'll pick it up a bit more than the the harsh lighting of this camera just now so um yeah it was uh overall quite an em enjoyable little project apart from the initial problems with the sculpt and the the new substance that they're using um it's it's quite difficult to get a smooth um split surface to paint over but uh i think if you use that tip that i put on the on the uh, the feed a little bit further down where you use the the varnish to smooth everything out um, it does make a big difference so have a go at that and see how you get one so that's it for me for now and uh, we'll see you in the next episode cheers